Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So in today's training, I want to share with you a candlestick trading mistake that almost all new traders make. So let's get to it. The mistake is this, is that you are trading in no man's land. So what do I mean by this? So for example, let's say this market right now is contained between these highs and these lows. It's in a range. Market goes up to the highs, comes back down to the lows, and goes back up to the middle of this range. And then maybe it forms a bullish engulfing pattern or a bullish hammer, whichever the case is. And you look at this, man, Rainer, look how bullish this is. It's time to buy. No, not quite. Why is that? It's because you are trading in no man's land. The price is in the middle of nowhere. If you look at this chart, you take a step back, you would realize the price isn't near the highs of the range or the lows of the range. It's at the middle of nowhere. And the problem with trading in no man's land is you get an unfavorable risk to reward. And let me, you know, kind of prove it to you here with a chart example. So if you look at this chart, this is the chart of dollar Canadian. Price is contained between these highs here and this uh, nearby swing low over here. And over here, you notice that there's a huge bullish engulfing pattern over here or a huge bullish candle. And traders will look at this. Oh, Rainer, look how bullish this is. The price is going to the moon. It's going to Pluto. It's time to buy. So where do they buy? The price close over here. Let's say you enter near the uh, open up of the next candle. You probably go along around 1.32. Okay, let's say you get, get long at this price. Your stop loss, right, a logical stop loss would have to go at least below this swing low. Let's say at here, 1.305. Now, what about targets? So if you look at target, this is the nearest swing high over here. So your target is possibly around 134. So if you look at this from a risk to reward standpoint, you are risking this much from here all the way down to here. This is how much you're risking. And if you look at it in terms of pips, your risk, right, let's call it RI, is about 270 pips. And your reward, your potential reward, let's call it RE, is potentially 80 pips, right, from eight from 1.32 to 134. There's a potential reward of about 80 pips. So you can see you are risking 270 pips to make 80 pips. And if I just take my calculator over here, that risk to reward is a potential almost risking a dollar to make 30 cents. So from a risk to reward standpoint, you can see that it's pretty darn unfavorable, especially when you're trading in the middle of nowhere. So again, if you look through your past charts, whenever you see that you're trading in the middle of nowhere, just analyze your potential risk to reward. Where could the market potentially go to relative to where your stop loss should be? Your risk to reward most of the time is less than one to one. Let me give you another example. So this one here, pound Canadian. If you look at the weekly time frame over here, same thing, price could make this bullish candle close over here. And if you access, access this chart, right, where is a logical place to put your stop loss? I would say, you know, this would be the nearest price structure, the nearest swing low, possibly around 167. Where could the boss market possibly go? I would say maybe into this area of resistance over here. So you can see that this is how much you, how much is your potential reward. Let's call it RE. And this is how much you have to risk to make that reward. Let's call this RI. Does it make sense? Is this something that you want to trade? I hope the answer is no. So that's the key thing that I'm trying to bring across is that when you are trading in no man's land, the risk to reward is usually unfavorable. It's kind of like in the ocean. When you're in the middle of the ocean, you're in uncharted territory. The risk is huge compared to if you're near the shoreline or if anything happens, you can just swim back to the sand, be safe and you know, collect some seashells. So remember this, right? Don't trade in no man's land. I'll explain or rather I'll share with you later, you know, where you should be looking for favorable risk to reward trades, where to find them. Next one, you are trading far away from an area of value. What do I mean by this? So if you look at this, the problem with this is that it's usually too late to enter as the market is likely to make a pullback or a reversal. So let me illustrate to you what this means. And let's say the market is in a nice uptrend, a series of higher highs and higher lows like this. And if you overlay with, let's say, a 50 period moving average, you might find that this type of market condition, the price tends to, you know, bounce off the 50 MA here once and twice. And right now, let's say the price is over here. The problem, right, when you're trading, or rather, you can see as of right now, let's say this one here is the 50 MA, we can conclude, right, that the 50 period moving average is an area of value. It doesn't have to only be the 50 period moving average. It could be an upward trend line. It could be an area of support or swing low. So whatever the case is, right, when the price is, let's say this point over here, let me just stretch it out further a bit. At this point here, it's pretty done far away from the 
50 period moving average from here all the way down here is the 50 period moving average you can see that it's pretty darn far away and when you're entering your trades far away from the area of value that is where the market is likely to make a pullback or a reversal and if you buy when it's far away from the area of value you're likely to get stopped out so let me give you an example so if you look at this chart over here fiverr okay so where is this chart area of value so i would say again in this type of trending market conditions this could serve as an area of value for this particular stock the 50 period moving average right almost tested uh, once here twice three times over here so you can see over here the 50 period moving average for this stock chart serves as an area of value and you look at this price over here right now at this price at 320 dollars at this highs do you want to be buying at this highs yes i know it's in an uptrend but do you want to be buying at this highs even though this market is in an uptrend and i hope you say the answer is no because no you don't want to because at this point the market could be could likely right make a pullback or even a complete reversal and where will the pullback end chances are at this area of value so this is kind of like a a swing down lower from here all the way down to here that you have to swallow it's going to be painful especially if you're buying at 320 dollars and the next area of value is around 220 230 dollars so don't trade far away from an area of value because when the pullback comes you'll likely get stopped out let me give you another example this one here is copper okay same story over here so in this case the 50 period moving average also here seems to be acting as an area of value tested once twice three times or if not if you're not using the 50 period moving average it could also be you know things like support resistance where this is previous swing high which could act as support so you can see that the area of value here is around three dollars and 75 cents or 72 cents around there so if you look at this right if you are looking the price now breaking up to this highs do you want to be buying at this highs when it's so far away from an area of value you can look at it like a rubber band being stretched when the rubber band is stretched the more you stretch it what's going to happen the stronger the snapback is going to be right rubber band when you stretch it naturally needs to you know snap back towards its you know normal size so same thing for this type of you know trending market where you can identify the area of value clearly if it's stretched far away from the area of value you want to be careful i don't care what candlestick pattern it shows whether it's a bullish hammer an engulfing pattern or whatever you know uh kacang putih pattern i don't care you have to be aware of the current price structure of the market whether is it near or far the area of value so now what now so earlier i've shared with you two common mistakes that many traders make number one trading in no man's land number two trading far from an area of value so how should we approach candlestick trading if we want to you know use this tool efficiently and it's just a one liner one liner and by the way if you're enjoying this training so far smash the thumbs up button if you don't then hit the subscribe button let's move on so what now and it's very simple what you want to do is to trade with the trend from an area of value so if you think about this this one sentence has actually overcome the two problems or mistakes right that our traders have made that i've just shared with you so let me explain how this works so again trade from trade with the trend from an area of value so let's say market is trending up higher series of higher highs and higher lows comes back down into this area of value maybe previous resistance could become support you want to be trading from this area of value that's one example or another example could be let's say market is trending up nicely like this comes back and retest this previous swing low over here this could be another area of value or it could even be retesting right a respected moving average like the 50 period moving average that could be another area of value in a trending market so let me share with you a couple of examples before we conclude today's session so first example to share with you is new zealand yen okay so if you look at this chart let me just share with you you can see over here this market is in a nice uptrend forming a series of higher highs and higher lows so let's recap what i just said trading with the trend from an area of value so what's the trend of this market on this time frame new zealand yen eight hour time frame the trend is number one uh, number two are we trading near an area of value from the looks of this we are now at this swing low this area of support over here and the answer is yes trading an area of value and number three this is where your candlestick pattern your candlestick knowledge comes into play at this point you have something that looks something like a a close to a bullish engulfing pattern or maybe a piercing pattern however you want to define it and really the definition of the candlestick pattern isn't as important right as the context as what i'm sharing with you trading with the trend from an area of value can you see the difference between buying here 
and trading in no man's land or trading when the price is far away from an area of value, big difference. One more example, right? Let's, let me let me give you a stock trading example to see that this concept can be can be uh, used for the stock markets as well. So if you look at this market, at this price chart, trading with the trend, number one, yes, check, trend is up. Number two, area of value. Again, this one over here at this previous swing high, which could become a support, tested once, and over here, tested a second time. And again, what candlestick pattern is this? This is where your candlestick knowledge comes into play. It looks like a bullish hammer to me. So can you again see the difference, right, between trading with the trend from an area of value compared to trading in no man's land and trading when the price is far away from the area of value. So this is what I'm trying to bring across, right, when you are trading with candlestick patterns. So let's do a quick recap. Number one, avoid trading in no man's land because from a risk to reward standpoint, it's usually unfavorable. And since I'm mentioning this, right, let's now go back and analyze this from a risk to reward standpoint. If you look at this potential, let's say a potential trading setup, let's say you buy at $45. Let's say your stop loss is at $37.50. Okay, so you, if you do the math, right, your stop loss, right, let's call it S, it's about $7.50. That's the size of your stop loss. What about your target? Let's say the nearest swing high before it, right, is here, about $60. So from your entry point, $45 to $60, your target, right, is a potential profit of, if my math serves me right, $15. So you're now risking $7.50 to make $15. Or if you look at it from a risk to reward standpoint, you're risking a dollar to make two dollars. Can you see now the difference between trading in no man's land and trading from an area of value? Can you? I hope you do. Because if, if not, right, then uh, uh, you might want to rewatch this video again and smash the thumbs up button again. So as I was saying, right, avoid trading in no man's land. Number two, avoid trading far from an area of value because this is where the market is likely to make a pullback or a reversal. And finally, number three, right, to really trade candlestick patterns, right, or to use your candlestick knowledge. Remember, trade with the trend from an area of value. Or you may even, you know, plaster this, plaster this on your wall, you know, like a coat or something like that to remind you to trade with the trend from an area of value. And by the way, if you want to learn more about such trading techniques, you know, price action trading, candlestick patterns, and much more, what you can do is go down to this site over here called Price Action Trading Secrets, right? This is actually a 140 page color trading book, a physical trading book where we'll dive deep into price action trading. We'll talk more about candlestick patterns, support resistance, how to tell when uh, the trend will end, how to tell when support resistance will break down, how to trade breakouts, how to trade reversal, uh, trading strategy templates that you can use, right, to implement in your trading. So all this over here on the website, I'll put the link below. If you're interested, go and get a copy. And with that said, I wish you good luck. Good trading, I will talk to you soon.